everyone, welcome to another painting video. Um, in this one I'm going to be painting the brazier objectives for Relic Blade. And um, I've sped up the video two times, and then uh, in some spots I've sped it up four times the speed to try and get through it a little bit faster. But um, this was a 40 minute painting session start to finish. And uh, the first step I'm doing is using a big brush to cover the biggest area, which is the stone column, and I'm using Great Coat Gray in uh, Privateer Press paints. Now, um, the next step, I'm switching to a smaller brush, but it's still quite big, and I'm going to use a brown, the brown I've been using on the bases of my models, to um, color the base of these models. It's um. It's neat. These models don't come with um, with model bases. They have integrated bases on them, and that makes it a lot easier to deal with um, model-wise. And then it'll also blend into the table a little bit more like terrain rather than as a character model on a on a base that's raised up off the table a little bit. Uh, I'm coating all of the skulls and stuff brown also which should give a nice um, dark tone to the recesses that don't get this next bone color. Now you can see I'm drying off my uh, paint a little bit on the paper that I have laid down, and that will just get it closer to a dry brush. And then you got to be pretty gentle doing this dry brush because the texture of the dirt on the model base isn't as deep as if you had used actual like gravel sand um, from a normal technique where you just like glue sand to the base and then color that. Now I'm going to do a first layer of Ulthwan gray, is that what it's called? Anyways, it's a it's a, almost white and um, I'm going to do a layer on all of the flames. Now to preserve the luminosity of flames and any bright light. You kind of want to start from white so that the white will show through on later layers. And um, yellows and oranges tend to be very transparent paints by nature. Greens also, just because of the type of pigments they are. So I definitely recommend starting from uh, a white undercoat. But it'll usually take multiple coats. So while that one's drying, I'm going to get in and start dry brushing these uh, on this part of the video, I'm doing it real time. This is not sped up at all, and that way you can kind of see how fast I'm moving my brush to actually do the dry brushing. Um, I'm using a makeup brush to do this dry brushing. Really, any larger brush will work. Dry brushing is pretty hard on the brushes, so you want to use something that you don't mind if it gets messed up. So uh, having a dedicated dry brush, paint brush, is pretty useful. Um, I'm going to go pretty heavy with this dry brush, jumping right up to almost white on the stone. And that's because I'm going to tone it down with a wash later, and I'm not going to come back in with highlights. I'm just going to do a really, really bold highlight to start with with that dry brush, and then wash over it, and I'm not going to come back in. Uh, here's my second coat of white on the flames. Um, you know, it's become sort of an online joke, the like too, th too thin coats. But I think in this video you'll see a couple of spots where the second coat is super important, you know. Um, it really, it wouldn't be painted that color otherwise. Oh, this is Retributor Armor. It's one of the newer gold colors from Games Workshop. And, um, and I'm really happy with this paint. It's got really good coverage. Um, and it also has sort of a warm tone to it, so it's sort of a bronze gold color. Uh, I decided to do the bowls of these uh, magical objectives in a gold. I think I think it's kind of neat. It adds color. It makes them stand out on the table a little bit more. Uh, and then also it sort of hints towards the like lost opulent age that that is in the ruins of the ancient world in Relic Blade, this 
age where you'd use gold even on these uh, bracer objectives. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to start working on the fire, and so I'm going to use my yellow. Um, you want to choose a yellow that's sort of more on the warm side rather than greenish side, but whatever you have is fine. And then I'm painting in almost all the way down to the bottom, and uh, I've watered down the paint a little bit, and that gives it pretty good coverage uh, over the white. And I think, you know, people have a hard time painting yellow sometimes, and I really think, you know, if you're going to paint anything yellow, just paint it white first and you'll get a really nice uh, result. Next, I took an orange and I mixed it a bit on my palette with the yellow, so it's sort of a mid tone between the orange and the yellow. And I'm coming down not quite as far as before. And then also leaving in some of the recesses the yellow of um, just pure yellow. Because, like, uh, if you kind of want to imagine that at the core of the flame is a, a brighter color. And then I'm coming in with the orange again. This is like pure orange, basically. It's somewhat mixed with the yellow, but getting up higher toward the tip of the flames and on the outer part of the outer ridges of the flames. So that's where we're going to get it. And you know, with fire, the darker colors or the more red colors are where the fire gets cooler in temperature. And so the, the farthest extremities would be the darkest. You know, reds as as dark as I would go, and I don't really think, I think red is even stylized too dark for flame. I, I wouldn't go darker. I see some people go all the way to black with when they're painting flames, and um, and I mean, it's it's a taste thing. If, if you like the way that looks, that's good. But um, I like to keep it bright, and so since it's a light source, you don't really want it to be darker than anything else on the board. So you want it to be the brightest thing in the context of whatever scene you're looking at. So keeping them bright is important. There I did a second coat of the gold, and I'm using my favorite Crixbane base to come in and uh, use it watered down a bit to get these coals. So whatever like magical substrate is burning on these, uh, I'm painting it kind of darker. And I think that'll make the flame stand out a little bit more if I come in and make it dark here. I've talked about it before, but I really like this color. It's a great neutral hue. Uh, it has the greenish tint to it, so it stays interesting. It's not just a cold, normal gray. It has life to it, and I highly recommend getting this paint. I'm a big fan of it. All right, now it's time to use washes. I've got Nuln Oil. I'm gonna use a couple of different washes because I have them available. Just one brown wash would work if that's what you have. I definitely recommend owning a couple of different washes, but start with the brown if you are first buying your collection. Um, black on the stonework. Uh, I kind of think that will help separate the textures a little bit where we've got these ancient columns and then the gold and then the, the dirt. I think having the, uh, the black shadows is going to be useful for making it have variation within the one little piece. Now, um, the contrast wasn't quite enough on the base, so I'm coming in with the brown wash and uh, especially coming in around the skulls and stuff to try and bring out some of the detail on the uh, sculpted detail there. The last wash I'm gonna use is a flesh wash. It's um, sort of a light orange and I'm bringing that, or not light orange, it's, it's like a warm brown. Anyways, um, I'm bringing it into the coals there. I kind of think it'll make them warmer while also increasing contrast and interest in the sculpted detail of those coals. And then also putting it into the bowls on the top of the braziers. Um, so you can see that little swirl at the very end there. I'm being careful to make sure that I don't get a bunch of wash pooled in the bottom of the bowl. And that, I mean, that's a spot that would really easily become a, a 
mess of pooled wash if you aren't careful with it. Then I'm also adding that wash on the tips of the flames just to create a little more variance in the color. At this stage, I'm using a blow dryer to dry the wash. Um, you can get kind of weird results if you do this, so I wouldn't do it necessarily on a model I was trying to be very careful with, but on these I just wanted to get them done and I have got that blow dryer handy. Um, I'm using some super glue to add static grass tufts. You can see in my How to Paint Warbands uh, video, I go into a little more detail about using those static grass tufts. And then this is clump foliage, and that's another really fun uh, hobby tool, terrain tool, that you can use to add little shrubs or bushes or uh, detail to the bases. And I talked about it before, just adding these little bits of, of um, material can really, really help the whole model look more detailed because these, these uh, supplies, these like uh, static grass and tufts and things are quite detailed and quite interesting to look at on their own. So it'll, it'll bring out detail that you didn't really have to do. I'm coming in again with another area of wash to pick out the darkest shadows. You know, washes can layer in a nice way to to get darker and darker if you if you want to increase the um, contrast on your model. Now, last year I left a bit of white at the base of the flames, and I decided that is a little bit unnatural. So I'm coming in again with the yellow to um, brighten up spots of the flames that got a little bit overworked with the orange and overworked with washes or whatever. Because you really want luminosity to be the main thing you take away from seeing painted flames. You can see I went over a little board, a little overboard with the uh, blow dryer and blew everything away. Um, the last thing I do here is I noticed there were some spots that uh, needed to get touched up around the rim of the base. So I got that with brown. Well, now that your uh, brazers are all painted, it's time to set them up and you can use them in a game. And these are super useful in games of Relic Blade and really in any uh, miniature game you can show whether the fire is lit or not to show it, who's controlling the objective. It's really super cool. Thanks for checking it out, guys. I really appreciate it.